What's up, you guys? Stupid's back in another video, and I'm back with the third installment of the BFA 8.1 PvP tier list. And today we are talking about healers. I took a little bit of time to craft up this video because honestly, I was expecting some nerfs to take place this week, and I didn't want to jump ahead of myself and make a video that was going to be irrelevant in a couple of days. But because we didn't have any changes on Tuesday, I think it's a good idea to make this list. I expect to see maybe some changes to this list maybe by next week but if we don't see them by next week i don't expect any changes till the end of the season which i believe is around january 22nd now in today's video this is going to be a little bit different than the other videos i'm going to speed through this one because this list is a lot more simple than the other lists that i've been putting out over the past couple weeks this list is going to be quite easy in my opinion uh, as you can see at the top of the list here, we have the Mistweaver Monk S plus tier, and that is going to be a big theme in this video. If you're unfamiliar with how tier lists work, there are several tiers, obviously in a tier list, S plus tier being the highest, S tier being, you know, the tier underneath that, and then you have A, B, C, D all the way down. But in this tier list, we have three tiers. We have S plus, S, and A. Now with this list, you have to keep in mind that there's no particular order, I would say, in individual tiers. There's obviously an order in the tier itself s plus s and a but within s don't get offended if your class is at the bottom of the s tier or the top of the s tier it doesn't matter so much and especially with this healer tier list right now if you're not at the s plus tier it's just kind of how this game works you're not the best healer and people prefer to play with the best healer but it does depend on the comp that you're playing and there are situations where a healer might be better than another healer based on the comp matchup and things like that but without further ado Let's get into this video. So jumping right into this list at the very top, we have the Mist Weaver Monk. Now, a few, maybe a month ago, or maybe a couple weeks ago, or like a little bit over a month ago, a lot of people were asking me, Stoops, what do you think is going to be the strongest healer in 8.1? And I always say, I don't like to guess, but my opinion is the Mist Weaver Monk. Why? Because Mist Weaver Monks didn't really receive any nerfs except a little bit of a nerf to Enveloping Mist, which does not include uh, Surging Mist. We also saw no changes to Wave the Crane in their damage output, and this is always the thing with Mistweavers, and it's been the same issue since Legion. Whenever a new patch comes out, whenever a new patch comes out, people don't know how much damage classes are going to be dealing. People don't know, uh, you know, what the best comps are. People aren't really sure of the exact meta. You can get an idea, but the meta hasn't, you know, developed well enough to where you're going to see specific comps you know really outshine other comps and we're getting to that point where they are now but whenever that's the case the mistweaver monk has always just been the best healer for the first few weeks or so it's always been that way i can't even think of a patch where the patch started and mystery monks were just absolute trash they're always the strongest healer for the first two weeks because they just have the highest healing output out of any class in the entire game and it's almost always been that way since legion they just have extreme extremely high burst healing and that helps combat classes that, dealing, that are dealing really crazy damage. Like Death Knights were dealing really crazy damage, still are dealing pretty crazy damage. Uh, Elemental Shamans, Moonkins, whenever someone's dealing, you know, huge chunks of damage, burst damage, you always want to have a healer that can recover from that. And that's always been the Mistweaver Monk. Now, Mistweaver Monks are going to have the same issue going forward because they don't have that much utility. They, they don't have a lot of utility. They did gain some in BFA with things like Disarm, take you know giving uh, Leg Sweep as a baseline ability, and then now having Ring of Peace is something you almost always spec into. This adds a little bit of utility, you know, Touch of the Mystic or the Mystic Touch where you mystic touch whatever it's called it increases the damage of physical damage on that target by five percent when you deal damage to that target so it's a nice little buff for utility but the problem is is mistweavers do not have any damage reduction and i'll talk about burst of life in a second and how that kind of fixes that right now but they don't have any damage reduction right they just have insane healing output and what happens is when the healing is just too high and i made a video about this earlier i might put it on the screen somewhere this is like a year ago i made this video and or in the link in the description box below i might put it there when you have too much healing output and you don't have any defensive utility, the only thing you can do to tweak the class mid expansion to either buff it or nerf it is to either buff or nerf their healing output or their mana regen. Uh, those two are tied very closely together. But what happens is the healing output is too high. So what Blizzard is going to do is they're just going to simply nerf the healing output or nerf the mana regen. If you nerf healing output, you directly nerf mana, you know, your mana because you're having to heal more and you don't have any damage reduction for your allies. So you have to have to just heal through it. All this damage, full on damage, no earth shield, no earthen wall, no pain suppression, no bark skin. You don't have any damage reduction that you can just throw out there other than really cocoon, which is a shield. So when you nerf their healing, they're going to oom faster. And this is the same thing that happened in Legion. 
Mistweaver monks in Legion until they had this wave. The crane spec would oom in the first couple minutes of the game, and that's what I expect going into the next season or the next patch. If Blizzard decides to nerf this class, if they decide to nerf this class, they're just going to nerf the mana or the healing, and then they're just going to go oom very fast, and they'll probably go back to the melee tier where they they heal and they're responsible for healing like double melee like turbo where they can burst fast enough to where the mana doesn't matter as much but right now misweavers are being used in every single comp you're seeing them everywhere because of their insane healing output wave of the crane adds a lot of burst and they still have decent utility just not as much as compared to some of the other healers that have purge cyclone roots vortex whatever you know tons of utility spells fear mind control master spell those team utility spells allow most of the time the other healers to outshine the misweaver but right now no one can compete with the misweaver healing output no one can compete with the wave the crane damage and healing some people think it's bugged i actually don't think that it is bugged in dampening maybe the numbers are a little bit off but what i will say if you are hitting for 20 to 30k rising sun kicks as a misweaver and you're still healing for 200 percent of that you're going to be dealing or healing for a lot like there's just no way of getting around that it's going to instantly top somebody almost no matter what so I don't think there's that many bugs with Wave of the Crane. There might be one. I expect the class to get nerfed, just how it always is. I would like Blizzard to look at this because it's the same model we had in Legion and try and correct some of this going into the next expansion so we don't have the same cycle where Mistweaver is really strong because they, they have the most healing and then they nerf it and then they oom too fast and they go down to the lower tiers. If you think I'm single-handedly getting Mistweaver's nerf by saying this, I made a Mistweaver and I've been playing it for over three years now. If you're new to my channel, that is my main. That is the class I have the most experience on for the past three years now. It's just everywhere. I hear c complaining about it. I hear everybody complaining about it. Even though they're playing the class, I can admit if a class is too strong. I just know what's going to happen in the future and how they're going to get nerfed. And I would just hope that Blizzard does something to try and correct this so it's not the same cycle for Mistweavers every single expansion now moving on to the s tier once again there is no particular order to the s tier in some of these classes i'm going to speed through these because honestly these classes are just not misweaver and that's what separates them right now i don't want to dive too much into the class because that's the reason why they're not in the s plus tier is that misweaver is just that much stronger than the rest of the healers now if misweaver gets nerfed then i can really dive into what separates the rest of these healers but restoration shaman right now is pretty good i would say into this meta because they have chain heal which is good for recovery purposes and dispelling shadow priest dots i mean you can get so many dispels off in a single match using healing rain and chain heal and chain heal heals for a ridiculous amount they're still pretty mana efficient and very tanky i think wrestler shaman is still a very solid healer they did get some nerfs going into 8.1 because they were way too strong for way too long so I expect them, I expect Mistweavers to get nerfed sooner than Wrestle Shamans did. Wrestle Shamans were like one of the best healers by far, I would say, for a long time because of just how the fact how mana efficient they were and how the fact that they had they didn't have to cast at all and they were almost unkillable in Ghost Wolf. They were unkillable, they never had to cast, and they never went oom. And no one really complained too much about Resto Shamans, but people just don't like Mistweavers, I would say, because their play style with this insane burst healing is just not fun to play against. And I under completely understand that. So my one weakness with Wrestle Shaman is right now is that they have to cast more and sometimes that goes against you and getting locked out on a crucial chain heal or not having enough healing output when you, you know, not relying on Riptide as much makes a big difference. Uh, I think having things like grounding and wind shear is still very useful. I think having things like purge is still very useful. Once again, I don't think there's anything really bad about resto shaman i would just say that they're just not misweavers and once again that's why i'm separating the two classes into two different tiers now moving on to holy paladins in the s tier a lot of people were saying that holy paladin I and mean, i heard peekaboo say it and people were like oh peekaboo says holy paladins are bad from a person that plays you know almost only a healer uh i wouldn't say holy paladins are bad i just think that misweaver is that much better once again and the biggest strength to holy paladins right now is number one they did get some changes right so in 8.1 they lost their ability to have two blessing of sacrifice or sacrifices ultimate sacrifice you're not having two sacks is pretty huge and i totally agree with that making them much weaker than they were i would say before to a certain extent and in the comps that they played right in the comps that they played they really needed to have those two blessings of the sack right when you're playing like rogue mage pally uh, having two sacks or your fire mage or your rogue is pretty huge when fighting certain comps. Uh, I think the comp is still really good. I think it's still good with Discipline Priest as well. I think the biggest strength to Holy Paladins right now is their healing has been increased, right? Their Holy Light and Flash of Light has been increased. So healing increase is pretty huge. But their biggest strength right now is that they're, all really, they're really tanky. They're hard to take down, especially in 2v2s. They're not as easy to kill. 
uh, as they used to be, especially in 2v2s. I think they're like a, not a target that you can actually easily kill. And they never go oom. I mean, their mana, re their mana efficiency is through the roof. I mean, the match can go on and I'm on my monk or I'm on any other healer. And that dude's still literally at 99 to 100% mana. I mean, it's insane. They actually spend zero mana and that's good in drawn out fights. Having their increased healing output with Flash of Light and Holy Light, having things like Melee Wing still dealing decent damage, but as a good recovery tool, not as good as Wave of the Crane, I would say, but still a good recovery tool. Having, you know, increased healing once again, and then being that mana efficient, I think Holy Paladin is still a very strong healer. I think it's still good in RMP, RM Pala. I think it's still good in caster comps. Those are the comps that you're seeing a lot of, mostly caster comps right now. But I would just say Holy Paladin is still in a decent spot. Uh, Divine Favor getting a nice buff too. Divine Favor making it so that you can't get interrupted and also provides... Uh, I spelled Divine wrong. I can't spell for shit anymore. Divine Favor is still being a very strong tool uh, like it was in Legion. Increasing your healing output on that spell, but also making it so you don't get ca you know uh, sheared or counterspelled on crucial heals that you need to get out and not having two blessing of sack uh not having you know ultimate sacrifice with two charges of that making it you have making it so you have to cast more just like resto shamans having divine favor and then also resto shamans also having clear casting they're very similar play styles i would say uh in some in some aspects uh, cleanse the weak having a shadow resist aura for holy paladins i mean they're very similar in a lot of ways one of them has purge one of them has i would say uh, more life-saving cooldowns, I mean, almost to an extent. So, and I think that you'll find that as a common theme through almost all these healers that I'll name on today's video. Now, moving on to Discipline Priest. Discipline Priest, a lot of people were saying that they were going to be trash and they don't do as much damage anymore. And that's how they were supposed to be mana efficient and they were supposed to heal. But I actually think Discipline Priest is still really strong because they still deal damage. They still have great team utility with things like Purge. Uh, MD, MC, Mind Control, Master Spell. If you don't know what I'm talking about, those are team utility spells that Discipline Priests have. They still have their 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 big barrier. Uh, big barrier is responsible or it allows them to live during very desperate moments. Uh, when they get in the, put in long CC chains, they can pre-barrier things. They can use barrier to save almost anybody. It's 70% damage reduction. But Depth of Shadow, which is the first thing I have listed here, is a Azerite trait. And I think this Azerite trait is actually responsible for Discipline Priest still being pretty relevant in today's meta. Uh, it, what it does is when you use your Purge the Wicked or your Shadow Word Pain dot, Purge the Wicked replaces Shadow Word Pain, when you dot individual enemies and you have this dot running, you build up a stack. And as this thing stacks up, it's going to buff your next Shadow Mend by uh, a certain number. Now, if you have things like Twist of Fate and you're falling very low, let's say you're playing a Discipline Priest and you're weaving in damage, you're penitenting, you're smiting, you know, whatever, you're getting shields going, you're dotting, you're purging, whatever you're doing, and then a person falls in the Twist of Fate range, you can go for a Shadow Mend, and that Shadow Mend will easily hit for like almost 80,000, which is almost an instant top. Now, Mystiverse can do that pretty consistently, I would say. Um, you know, Resto Shamans can do that with things like Chain Heal, maybe. But not as, I wouldn't say it's as bursty and just one casted heal as Discipline Priest. Discipline Priest are still really strong for their team utility. Once again, their damage, um, they're still good in certain comps, I would say. They're still actually pretty good into dampening comps, I would say. If you're fighting like a double caster, Discipline Priest actually does pretty well if you know how to play uh, using your damage to team heal. It's not as effective as it once was, but Death of the Shadow, I think, really makes up for that. And I still think they have their place in the meta. Then I wouldn't really separate them between Wrestle Shamans and Holy Paladins at this moment. So I think they belong uh, most certainly in the S tier. If you're not playing this trait, you probably don't feel that way. But if you're playing this trait, then you'll kind of understand what I'm talking about. Unless you're playing like Battlefield Focus in 2v2s, which it also is really, really strong. Now, moving on to the final class in the S tier. This could be an A tier class to some people. And I could put Holy Priest a little bit of a teaser, teaser in the B tier. I just think Resto Druids are still struggling. I think Nourish was a great change and Nourish is a very strong heal. Um, I just feel like in my mind, they do have some great utility, I should say, right? They have things like Cyclone, Roots, Vortex, Thorns, Scenario Ward, I think is a very strong talent to be played in certain situations. Um, I, 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 I think Nourish was a nice change. I think they're good in dampener comps. I think they're going to be good in pl playing with like maybe, you know, a Death Knight and a Shadow Priest. I think they're going to be good in double caster comps. 
but I just feel like they don't, there's nothing that separates them in my mind from some of the other healers, especially Mistweaver. I feel like Mistweaver is just a better version of Restitute at this point that does lack a little bit of utility. But like with, for example, Revival got a stealth buff recently in 8.1. Some people don't know this. Revival cleanses all magical and harmful effects and also heals. But the healing when going from Legion to BFA, BFA initially, the Revival heal was just like minuscule. I felt like you didn't even heal with you when you used it. And then in the patch notes, they didn't talk about it at all. <laughs> go figure but it got buffed and now it heals for like an absorbent amount where you know it reminds me of tranquility but it's just revival is just way way better it's instant and it heals for more than tranquility does tranquility recently got a nerf i think nourish wasn't enough for druids to be uh in a better spot i think they still struggle when they get stuck but so do mistweavers they're very similar in my mind to mistweavers just a little bit more cc but less healing at this point i would say so Right now, you could argue that, you know, Resto Druids are going to be in the A tier, and then maybe I put Holy Priest in a B tier. Uh, but for now, this is my list. I think Resto Druids still have a place in certain comp matchups, and I think if you're an exceptional Resto Druid, you can perform well playing in almost any comp. Uh, it's just I don't think they're as strong as some of the other healers, but we'll see how the patch rolls out and what happens in next season. Maybe I'll change this list uh, in the next coming weeks or so. All right, now moving on to the A tier. You can see all the tiered classes here. We have A tier, S tier. Mystery River S plus tier, every other healer except Holy Priest in the S tier, as they're very similar in my mind. Maybe Rest of the Druids could be argued another way. And then Holy Priest. Now, people were saying Holy Priest was going to be super strong in 8.1. Yes, Greater Heal is very, very strong. And yes, they are good into caster comps. Yes, when you're playing with like another two casters, uh, they're still very strong. But the problem with Holy Priest, and it's still their issue, is they just they just die when getting trained i mean they're, they're, i think they're even worse than discipline priests they just die when getting trained um by any like double melee uh walking dead for example if you're fighting a walking dead uh you're just gonna flop over and i think holy Pri i mean i think discipline priests are even better at surviving in those situations and because of this and because of their ability to only play caster comps in my mind only it's hard for me to give them a spot in some of these other tiers. I mean, almost every other healer can be played in almost any comp, whereas Holy Priest can only be played in caster comps. And when they are played in caster comps, they can do pretty well. But the problem is, is as you're climbing the ladder, you're going to run into a lot of double melee. You're gonna get, you're gonna run into walking deads, turbos, and any of those comps can just run at you. And if they can kill you fast enough, it doesn't matter how much damage your casters are doing. If they're paired with like a Mystery River Monk, for example, they're probably not going to die in the first couple minutes or so. And that's all that it's going to take for you to fall as a Holy Priest. So right now, Greater Heal is really strong. I, I want to talk about that, for, you know, or at least mention that. It is very strong, but you can only get so many of them off if you are getting trained. And if you're not getting trained, you know, they're probably hitting one of your casters. And that might be where you shine the best, but because you're likely going to get trained, you know, moving up the ladder, I just can't imagine Holy Priest being in some of these other tier spots, especially when the lower brackets always seem to have a lot of double melee going on in those areas. And then also the fact that you only play a certain comp style, I think is one of their weaknesses. So for me, I just don't see Holy Priest as that strong. I'm not saying that they're not strong. I just don't think they're as strong or as well-rounded as some of the other healers on this list including the Mistweaver Monk. And there it is, ladies and gentlemen, that is my 8.1 BFA healer tier list for PVP as of January 1st, 2019. Happy New Year, by the way, ladies and gentlemen. This is my list. If you guys have any comments or questions on my list, you can leave them in the comment section below. But this is what I generally believe to be uh, the rankings in terms of healer. Again, there's no particular order, but I will say Mistweaver is just really strong right now, and I expect to see some changes in the future. And when that does happen, I'll be sure to update this video. With that being said, that is going to do it for this video. If you guys enjoyed this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up. If you have any more questions or concerns or comments, you can leave those in the comment section below, and I'll try to get back to you as soon as I can. Be on the lookout for my new Mistweaver guide. Speaking of Mistweavers, a new Mistweaver guide coming out this week or in the next couple days or so. Big shout out to all my Patreon supporters out there who've been supporting me on Patreon this whole time without you guys this channel wouldn't be possible and if you're interested in supporting me on patreon the link is in the description box below and for supporting me on patreon you can also earn yourself some coaching try not to miss me on my twitch live stream or answer all of your guys questions in depth do not forget to subscribe and i'll see you guys next time <laughs>